Alright, in this video I'm going to show you a quick technique that you can take some images, particularly high quality images, at least like 4K resolution, and we can create a Ken Burns effect, and that's what you see right here on my custom live wallpaper. So if you're not familiar with the Ken Burns effect, it's a type of panning and zooming effect, and notice this is done on still imagery. So here I am inside of KOWP, and sometimes these images will not show up in the advanced editor, but as you saw back on my live wallpaper, everything was displaying just fine. You can find this preset for free in my free wallpapers folder. Just look for Ken Burns. That's what I call the preset. Let's jump on over to the globals and let me show you a few things here that you can tweak. This is where you can add your four images here. Scrolling on down, we have a dir. This dir is how long the fade transitions go through. And I'll show that to you right here in a moment when we look at the complex animation. The width and the height, you can adjust that to your image. Notice I am making my height quite a bit taller than the screen height. And I think the screen height somewhere around 15 or 1600. This will allow us to zoom in or move the images a little bit too. And really that's all I'm doing. I'm letting these images scroll as well as scale. And that's what's given that Ken Burns effect. So again, the width and the height, these are linked to those four shapes that ultimately make those images. The move dir is the length of time that we let each image scroll, whether we're scrolling up at an angle, left, right, down, you can adjust those angles, but this is the duration for that. Zoom amount, I have it set to one. This is where we're going to scale the image, and we don't really want to scale it too much. If I crank this up, you can see how it does zoom in quite a bit. So a zoom amount of one, this is linked to our animations. It gives it a very subtle effect, and I think that's what really makes this look nice. So that's it for the globals. Let's head on over to the images. The first shape, I think this one is the parrot actually. Notice I have the width and the height linked there, those globals I just showed you. Heading on over to FX, I have that global variable, that first image. And then if we head over to animation, we have three types of animation going on. The first one I wanna look at is this complex animation. And this is what's allowing those images to fade in and out. I have it set to react on a loop. And if we actually dive into the animator for the complex animation, I had this Excel file loaded up photo one, two, three, and four, and these percents will tell us where we can adjust the transparency. This is the complex animation for photo number one, and notice from zero to 20, I'm saying it's in. That means the image is showing. So from zero to 20, transparency is set to zero, right there, 0% and 20%. From 20 to 25%, this is where we want it to fade out. Notice from 20 to 25, I had the transparency going from 0% to 100% transparent. And then everything from 25 to 95, it's still going to be 100% transparent. But notice down here at the bottom for photo one, from 95 to 100, I want it to fade back in. And that's exactly what I have going on here. 95%, the transparency is 100. 100%, the transparency is back to zero. So you can see how this Excel file here does follow what I have set up over here. So you can use this to create it, or you can just get the preset from my free wallpapers folder. Checking on that, and if we come down here and look, notice I have the duration. This one is that GV dir. So essentially, all four of these images are gonna take 20 seconds with the way I have it set up right now. Now when I say 20 seconds, that's for the entire complex animation. So photo one, photo two, photo three, photo four, those will be fading in and out over the course of 20 seconds. So you guessed it, each photo is roughly showing fading every five seconds. Checking on that. And then I have nothing else set up inside of here. Let's back up to the other animations. We have a loop with return and I have this set to scroll. This is a slightly different duration. This is a GV move dir. So 10 seconds for it to scroll. And what do I mean by scroll? If we look down here, I have an angle of 330 degrees and very little speed. As a matter of fact, now that I'm sitting here doing this tutorial, it may be a good idea to come in here and create globals for both of these as well. So let's back out of here and let's go check out this other loop with return that's set to scale in. I had the same GV move dir applied to that for the duration and I had the amount that was that global. And again, I mentioned just a moment ago, it may be a good idea to go in and create globals for the speed of the scroll as well as the angle that you're scrolling at. Having all of those globals in one spot instead of having to dive into each individual image and then adjusting those settings there. Entirely up to you. But anyway, checking on that, and that is it for that part. I'm just going to dive to a different image. Let's go down here to this fourth one. 
Essentially, I'm just copying and pasting these images. I'm making sure to change the image. So this is the fourth picture. If I head over to animation, notice we have the same three types of animation, but let me just point this out to you to make sure you understand this. For this complex animation, this is the fourth image. Notice I don't want it fading in until we hit 70 to 75%. So from zero to 70%, I want it to be 100% transparent. From 70 to 75, this is where it's going to fade in. From 75 to 95, we'll check it out, 75 to 95, in. That means it is completely showing. And then finally, from 95 to 100, we go from 0% transparent to 100% transparent, and that's where we're having that fade out from 95 to 100%. I hope that makes sense. Let's back out of here, and let me show you just some randomness here. For this scroll, if we look down here, the speed is the same. Of course, you can adjust that to your liking, but I am randomizing these angles, so to speak. So they're all going to be moving slightly at different angles, and by doing this, in my opinion, it does make the live wallpaper look better. But uh, yeah, there you have it. A quick effect, taking some images, adding a Ken Burns effect, where we're essentially zooming in on the image some, and we're scrolling it left, right, up, down, or some random angle. And then we also applied the complex animation here, where we can fade each image in and out to give those smooth transitions as we move from one image to the next. If you like what you see and you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.